movie review of Am I Racist? Okay, I have to say that I invited my son to go and watch this movie with me. And he said, basically he didn't want to go, but he hopes I get the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that cracked me up. That was, um, you know, he texted it to me, he texted me and said, I don't, I don't want to go, but I hope you get the answer. And, uh, I thought that was so funny. And I did kind of get the answer, or at least this person's answer. Okay. So let's watch the movie trailer and review it. Be clear what's happening in this country. It's Nazism. Republicans are Nazis. You cannot separate yourselves from the bad white people. Growing up in the 90s, I never thought much about race. Sure, you noticed, but it never really seemed to matter that much. At least not to me. Being a white, straight, cisgender man is the top of the pile. I'm on the top of the pile. That's me. Am I racist? I would really appreciate it if you left. I'm trying to learn. I'm on this journey. Can you please leave? If I'm going to sort this out. I need to go deeper undercover. If I want to be an ally, I need to look like one. What is racism? Martin Luther King said not to judge people by the... Martin Luther King said a lot of stuff. Is America inherently racist? What the hell is that? The word inherent is challenging there. America is racist to its bones. All of the... So inherently. Yeah. The entire system has to burn. And I'm not going to even use save this country. This country is not worth saving. This country is a piece of shit. Oh, sorry. Sorry. They gonna say I'm racist. Joining us now is Matt, certified DEI expert. Here's my certification. Where are you guys on your anti-racist journeys? <laughs> so I'll look around the room and point to who we believe is the most racist person in the room. We want to rename the George Washington Monument to the George Floyd Monument. Would you mind signing it? If you will. What do you think about this issue of heteronormativity and how it intersects with the broader structures of racism in society? Oh. They gonna say I'm racist. What's up with white people? What are you doing to decenter your whiteness? Who's making it the center? Why are they doing that? What you're doing is you're stretching out of your whiteness. There's more for you in this field. <laughs> white folks, white trash, white supremacy, white woman, white boy, white entitlement, white. centering, white silence. Is there a black person around here? There's a black person right here. Does he not exist? They gonna say I'm racist, but they call everybody racist. Hi, Robin. Hi. And what's your name? I'm Matt. Matt. Hi, yeah. Matt. <laughs> nice to meet you. Just had to ask who you are because you have to be careful. <laughs> Never be too careful. They gonna say you racist. Man, that, that trailer was pretty fast. I was kind of wanting to pause it and talk about things in the movie, but it kind of went really fast. I'm going to rewind it and try it again. I thought the movie was really funny. I really enjoyed it, but I don't think it was movie theater worthy. You, I mean... The people in the theater did really enjoy it, and, you know, they laughed a lot, so it was kind of fun, but I think I would wait for this to come out on whatever for free, you know? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to pause it at places. In this country, it's Nazism. Republicans are Nazis. You can't separate yourselves from the bad This lady here is pretty mean. <laughs> this other lady invited Matt Walsh to come and sit down at the table and join in their discussion, and she said no. This lady here said no. White people. Growing up in the 90s, I never thought much about race. Sure, you noticed, but it never really seemed to matter that much. I really love this part. He's at this diner. And the waitress comes to pour him coffee, and she asked him, how do you like your coffee? And he was reluctant to say the word black. And it was pretty funny, because in real life, I know a girl like that. And she loves Chipotle, and when she goes to Chipotle, they ask her questions like, do you want white rice or, or brown rice, I believe. I've actually 
Yeah, I've been there one time only. But that was a long time ago. But anyway, she feels awkward saying that she wants white rice over brown rice. And I think it's even the same way with like the the cheese, if she wants white cheese or there was something else, the beans. <laughs> she she struggles with choosing what kind of beans she wants on her Chipotle order. So it's kind of weird seeing that in the movie. He was awkward about saying he wanted black coffee. Not to me. Being a white, straight, cisgender man is the top of the pile. I'm on the top of the pile. That's me. Am I <laughs> racist? I would really appreciate it if you left. I'm trying to learn. I'm on this journey. Can you please leave? I'm going to sort this out. I need to go deeper undercover. Yeah, that class that the lady kicked him out of just now. Um, uh, some kind of anti-racism class. I believe that it said he paid $30,000 to go to that class. And then he got kicked out. I don't know if he got his money back, but I wanted to know. If I want to be an ally, I need to look like one. What is racism? Martin Luther King said not to judge people by the... Martin Luther King said a lot of stuff. Okay, so he got his DEI certification. And that stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And he went around with this little card flashing it like it was a badge everywhere. Like, hey, I'm qualified to talk about this. I've got my DEI certification. Is America inherently racist? What the hell is that? The word in... Oh, dang it, I missed it. So where the guy said, what the hell is that? He asked him a question like, oh, do you think America is systemically racist? And he looked at his girlfriend and he says, systemically what the hell's that? <laughs> and I could totally relate to that guy. I don't know what it means either. And I'm always wondering it. Every time I hear it, I'm like, what does systemically mean? And who talks like that? Parent is challenging there. America is racist to its bones. All of the... So inherently. Yeah. The entire system has to burn. And I'm not going to even use save this country. This country is not worth saving. This country is a piece of shit. Oh, sorry. Sorry. They gonna say I'm racist. Joining us now is Matt. Can you hear that music playing? That's one thing I really loved about this movie was that song. And they played it at the end and I really wanted to stay in the theater and listen to it. But same time I was ready to leave. So I would really like to look that song up and listen to it. I really liked it. Certified DEI expert. Here's my certification. Where are you guys on your anti-racist journeys? <laughs> so I'll look around the room and point to who we believe is the most just person in the room. Spoiler alert. When he says point to the most racist person in the room, a couple people got up and walked out. And um, then Matt Walsh pointed to himself. He's like, yeah. I'm the most racist person in the room, and he's expected all the other people, the other class attendees, to point to themselves. I didn't expect that. That was kind of funny. I'm going to rename the George Washington Monument to the George Floyd Monument. Would you mind? This part was really funny because people, <laughs> people looked truly confused that were on the street passing by. They, were, they had this petition that they were asking people to sign to change... The name of the George Washington Monument to the George Floyd Monument and increase the size by 30% and paint it black. And I think the majority of people did sign the petition, but they didn't look like they really wanted to, you know? They looked more like they were obligated. Signing <laughs> it, if you will. What do you think about this issue of heteronormativity and how it intersects with the broad? It was so funny. He he took all these classes on how not to be racist. And then he takes his the things that he learned to the public. And so he went to this biker bar to talk about these people that he thought would be racist, if anybody. So he goes in there and he's using all these buzzwords like... Um, I don't know what he was saying. Like centered whiteness or... You know, of course, I already talked about the word systemically, and 
he used some other words with this guy right here and nobody knew what he was talking about and there was actually some guys which i'm going to try to pause on them later that they were young guys and they were walking down the street and they're that <laughs> they thought he was crazy. They're like, yeah, you need some help. You definitely need to work on yourself. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> so they thought he was mental. Structures of racism in society. Uh, they gonna say I'm racist. What's up with white people? What are you doing to decenter your whiteness? Yeah, that's the words that he used. Decenter your whiteness. That's what he was asking these guys at the bar biker bar here, like. <laughs> and their reactions were so funny they looked so confused and I don't blame them I would have been too you're making it to the center why are they doing that what you're doing is you're stretching out your whiteness this is more for you <laughs> white so. white trash white supremacy white <sighs> Well, it just showed one of the guys that were accusing him of being mental. They just thought he was nuts. They're like, how dare you come and ask us these things? We don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> white boy. White entitlement. White. Centering. White silence. Is there a black person around here? There's a black person right here. Does he not exist? They gonna say I'm racist. But they call everybody racist. Hi, Robin. Hi. And what's your name? I'm this This lady... I've actually heard her name before, but I didn't know what she, who she was or anything. But I guess she wrote a book that was really popular called White Fra Fragility. Like Fragile, White Fragility. And her name is Robin D'Angelo. So she was a little bit entertaining. I kind of liked it. That, I bet. Yeah, that's an intro. I just had to ask who you are because you have to be careful. <laughs> Never be too careful. They gonna say you racist, but they call everybody racist. And you know, it's kind of been on the news that Robin D'Angelo, you know, she got paid for doing this interview with Matt Walsh for this movie. And she didn't realize, I guess, what it was that she was actually going to be on a movie. I'm not sure, but she felt like she wasn't happy with it or whatever. So she shut down her, what they say, her Twitter page or some kind of social media. Okay, there's one more part here. Let me get back to it. There's one more little movie trailer that... I thought it was pretty good. Are they talking about Moana? Yeah, this one here. My daughter's four years old. I am an anti-racist educator, quote unquote. She's still watching Disney movies and she is choosing a white princess over princesses of color. Have you talked to her about that? All the time. My three-year-old daughter is very, her favorite princess is Moana. Love it. It's a good sign. Yeah. But then I also thought, you know, there's a, a little bit of cultural appropriation here. She wants to be Moana for Halloween. Mm-hmm. So how do we navigate that? Do I go and, and, and buy the Pacific Islander native uh, attire for my white three-year-old? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But I guess the, what we might call the Moana problem here is, <laughs> is what, uh, on one hand, there's cultural appropriation. On the other hand, there's gravitating towards uh, white characters. Right. So it's almost like, no matter which way you go, you right. end up back in racism. We think every space belongs to us because we live in a white supremacist society. Is America an inherently racist country? I think the word inherent is challenging there. If we say... Fundamentally. Fundamentally, yes. America is racist to its bones. All of the... So inherently. Yeah. They gonna say you racist. Am I racist? In theater September 13th. Rated PG-13. Buy tickets. Okay, so... Basically, that's the movie trailer. And, you know, I really liked the movie. I thought it was a lot of fun and funny. I love funny movies, comedy. That's my thing. And, um... The only thing is that it got a little bit redundant. Like, you get 
you got the picture already and they just kept going and going and I didn't I don't know it wasn't too bad but it was just like making me a little bit shift around in my seat like okay enough of that <laughs> move on and then um you know like I said earlier like I just didn't feel like it's movie theater worthy it's more like um you know something that you watch at home for free when it comes out later on but as for who I would recommend this movie for I think I would recommend it for everybody you know, even kids, I think it would be kind of good for kids to realize, you know, what's kind of being pushed on to us by the media. You know, basically the the moral of the story is the media tries to get us to believe that some of us are racist and the others of us are victims. And neither one are true, exactly, except for the p people that are pointing the finger at other people, calling them racist. Those are the true racists. But, um, yeah, it was definitely a feel-good movie. And everybody was in a good mood when they left. It was, it was a good movie. I liked it. I recommend it. At home. <laughs> Alright, that's the end.